This is the latest Ease Series D1 projector from Arzen. It's a 1080p Full HD native smart projector that has all your favorite apps pre-installed, as you can see here. And upon launch of this projector, this comes in at just under $100. And combined with all the features packed into this, which we'll talk through shortly, I would have to say it's probably one of the best smart projectors you can buy in the budget-friendly price bracket, making this really good value for money. So let's start off with the unboxing and let's get into it. So you have yourself the power plug, the remote control, user manual, HDMI to HDMI cable, a cleaning kit, and this is the projector itself. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the design while I show you the key features. So it does have this very lightweight and slim design here. You can see the lens does have a little cap, which you can just take off. And it also has a sensor just there at the front. This sensor as well allows you to do obstacle avoidance, which is actually very great for a projector of this price value. Now this does have Dolby Audio because this has two 8 watt speakers and it's going to give you a very rich and clear sound. And we will be testing out the audio as well. And along the top, you also have the menu buttons and the power button if you want to control it manually. Now commonly you have the ports usually on the back of projectors, but these are on the left hand side. This might be useful for some people depending on where you want to position the projector to have the cables coming out from the side. But nonetheless, this has a headphone port, AV port, two USB ports, HDMI, and the DC input. At the bottom, you do have a screw kickstand just there if you want to tilt the projector at a certain angle. Then you have a quarter 20 inch thread there if you want to mount it maybe from a ceiling or directly onto a tripod. But this also has two pop out filters. So if you decide you want to clean the filters, maybe a lot of dust has gathered over time, then this is actually quite nice. You can pop these out and replace them or clean them and then just push them back in when you're done. So now let's go ahead and turn this on, go through some of the apps and settings and see how it performs from the video quality and also the audio quality. Okay, so everything is now up and running. Before we go through the smart OS system and go through some of the video and audio demos, one thing I like to test is the fan noise. So I'm just going to get a little bit closer and see how noisy this is. So make sure that you try to use some headphones if you really want to hear. Now you may not hear much from the microphone, which is quite close to this projector, but this is actually pretty quiet. And I know when I do play some audio and some content, depending on how loud I put it, you're not going to hear any of the fan noise whatsoever. So that's actually really good to see. I've used a lot of projectors that are very noisy and that do interfere sometimes with the content, but this is not one of them. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the system and go through some of the settings and see what this can do. Okay, so first and foremost, this is only 200 ANSI lumens, which you can see there's a lot of daylight coming into this room and it's very bright. So the screen is a little bit washed out and you wouldn't really be able to enjoy content, especially if you have a lot of dark scenes in whichever video you're watching, it's going to be very hard to see. So to get the best capabilities out of this, I would always recommend if you do have a projector, especially a budget friendly one like this that has quite a low ANSI lumen count, then make sure you use this in a darkened room. So what I'm going to do is eliminate all of the light sources in the room, make it dark, just so you can see how this will actually perform with how most of you will use it. And there you go, you can see how much clearer that is. Okay, so let's dive into the smart OS system. You can see there front and center, you have the Netflix license app there. You also have YouTube and Prime Video. These are the three buttons on the remote control to give you quick access to those apps. You can also download more apps from the App Store, but just remember this is not an Android TV or Google TV system. So you may find that you won't get apps such as Disney Plus or Apple TV but you do have the option to find a whole bunch of other apps that you may enjoy across a variety of categories. So we'll just take a quick look at that. You can see along the top, if we browse the categories, these are your live TV apps. You can actually favorite some of them and add them to my apps page. You have a section for kids. You have sport apps, music apps, movies, news, entertainment, games, and service. And if you scroll right to the end, you can also see the whole list of every app available. So there's plenty of options there if you do want to explore other apps, but the top three that I mentioned right there front and center are probably going to be the main ones that you would use this projector for. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. 
Of course, you can connect other devices such as a HDMI input for an Apple TV or maybe an Amazon Fire Stick, whatever you like. You can also connect a USB stick so you can play media files off of that. And if we go into settings, you can find all of the options here. So if I just quickly cycle through some of these, these are your common setup options just there on that menu. Picture mode, you can select a variety of different picture modes. So you've got standard, you can switch between that and go to custom settings so you can make adjustments manually. You can go to cinema mode, sport, vivid and high bright or back to standard. I'll leave everything at standard just so you can see how everything looks on its default settings. And likewise, you can also make adjustments to the audio. So if you want to change the sound style, you can do a similar thing with the sound style options here. Then you can also set a digital output mode. I'm going to leave it on automatic, but you also have the options to change it to PCM, Dolby Digital or Dolby Digital Plus. Dialogue enhancement is off, but if you feel like you're hearing more of background noises, or maybe if you're watching a movie and you're hearing a lot more of the explosions, for example, in action movies, and you can't hear people talking that much, then dialogue enhancement can also be turned on. You can also turn on key tones for your remote control. So every time you navigate the menu, it will make a small tone. I'm just going to leave that off. You can connect Bluetooth accessories, whether that's a set of headphones or a soundbar, whatever it may be. You have your Wi-Fi settings. You can select the position of the projection. So I'm just leaving it as the main desktop view. You can do a manual keystone correction as well, but change the keystone settings as you can just see there. You can also zoom and I get this question quite often as well. If you're going to place a projector in a fixed location that you can't move flexibly, then having a projector that allows you to zoom the screen so it fits onto whichever surface you're projecting it on is actually very important. So you can go all the way down to 50% like I'm showing you here. This is such a convenient factor as well. So if you don't want to move like your, your table, your tripod, wherever it may be you're placing it, then you want to have the flexibility of knowing that this will give you confidence that wherever you position it, you can find the right screen size. You also have the focus. You can do autofocus or manual focus from here. And then you have some information about the projector. So that's pretty common settings and it's basically everything you need. There's nothing else missing. So let's go ahead now and dive into a video demo. And I want you to try and hear out to all of the crisp and clear sounds that are coming from the video, but not just that, take a closer look at the visuals. I'm using my standard white screen as well. It will look very similar if you project this onto a white wall. And if you're lucky enough to have an ALR screen, then it's going to be even better. So I'm going to play a demo video. So if you do have some headphones, try to listen out to how it sounds and I'll be sitting quite close to the projector. So you get a good idea of how well the two 8 watt speakers perform with Dolby Audio.
another chance to become more of who you were created and what you were created to fulfill. Everyone in the world is capable of living outside the role or beyond the roles that they place themselves in, no matter what it is. You're not just a dad, you're not just a baker, you're not just a brother or a son or a convict. It doesn't matter, like, everyone is bigger, much bigger, infinitely bigger than the roles they place themselves in and is capable of reaching potential greater than anything they could imagine. So that's all. Hopefully you found that review useful. My final thoughts is that honestly, for a projector that's as affordable as this, which also comes with HD visuals to immerse yourself in clear images that are vibrant and sharp in dark settings, with really loud 8 watt Dolby Audio speakers that give you clear, rich dialogues, and just the overall ease of setup with autofocus and auto keystone corrections, this is simply one of my favorite projectors I've used that's priced at less than $100. Of course, it's needless to say, it will work best in dark rooms, but I know that's the scenario most people would use this projector in. If you have any other questions about this, as always, drop a comment down below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all at the next one.